we're actually getting some comic book news trickling out into the comic book media. It's not only characters' pronouns and exploring their bisexuality or bi curiousness. There's actually hard news, and it looks like Marvel Comics has lost the license or is losing the license to a major character that they just picked up a couple of years ago. Happens to be one of my favorite characters. It all of fiction. One of my sons may or may not be named after a character from Robert E. Howard's Conan universe. But there's more. Marvel also released information. If you are a Ghost Rider fan, you are about to be happy. You probably know that we're in the 50th anniversary year of the debut of Ghost Rider. And they're going to celebrate it. I got details on that as well as the Conan license issue. I got opinions. I know you're shocked to hear that. Now let's get into the information. I'll give you my opinions and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. Marvel Comics is reportedly moving on from the license of Conan the Barbarian, which may lead to major changes in some comics the hero was set to appear in. Reports suggest that the American rights of Conan have lapsed as Marvel Comics no longer owns the U.S. rights to the American character. Recently, a commenter in a fan group referenced an Asad Ribich cover for Conan Exodus being the last piece of art the artist would do on the character for Marvel as the publisher no longer owns the rights. Further reports suggest the current owners of the U.S. trademark plan on publishing Conan comic books themselves. The report also notes it won't impact upcoming collections and reprints from Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics have had the Conan license for only about like three years. I think Conan the Barbarian debuted in 2019. It was actually kind of a good start from Jason Aaron, one of the few things that he can actually do. He's got a uh, King Conan going on right now, and it's one of the maybe nine or ten comics from Marvel that, that they're putting out that I would actually recommend you read because it's pretty decent. And they had Savage Avengers from Jerry Duggan, which is actually really good. But the best one they did in this current iteration was Savage Sword of Conan, one through five from Jerry Duggan with Ron Garney on art. That is a fantastic story. If you haven't read that story, go check it out. I think you're going to love it. Ron Gardy is like the perfect Conan comic book artist. The dude is badass. It's brutal. And uh, it just looks so good. And Jerry Duggan just has a, a really good feel for Conan for some reason. He can't do X-Men for anything, but he's got a good handle on Conan. But I will admit I am not sad to see Marvel lose this license. There are much better Conan comic books coming out right here, right now, from Oblaze Comics. They're called the Sumerian series. Essentially, these are European Conan comic books that are repackaged, translated, and then printed in the U.S. as the Sumerian. They can't use the Conan name because of, of the license that they don't have. But in Europe, it is in public domain already. That's why people are already able to use the Conan character and likeness and tell new Conan stories in comic books. Thankfully, they are doing faithful adaptations of the Robert E. Howard works, and they are brilliant. If you need to read a good Conan comic that's modern, go read the Sumerian comics from Ablaze. They are fantastic, beautiful art, faithful adaptations. Just don't read the stuff Ablaze is making. This week they had the Belit and the whoever spinoff series written by Max Bemis. Don't check that one out. That's not from Europe. That's some bullshit they made here. But the Sumerian stuff is absolutely brilliant. So I am not shedding a tear that Marvel Comics is, is losing this license, although their, their Conan stuff has been pretty good, much better than I anticipated since they've had the license. But their work on Alien so far has been lackluster. I like Alien Comics, even bad Alien Comics, but the Philip Kennedy Johnson Alien series just isn't calling me. I'm hoping for better coming out of Predator, but we shall see. I think that one, is that out? Is that Ed Brisson? I can't remember, but I'm hoping it's good because I really like Predator comic books too. But the problem with Marvel Comics getting a license like Conan or Alien or Predator is it's always going to take a backseat. It's always going to be a second-class, third-class citizen to the regular Avengers comics and Spider-Man and all the other characters that they actually care about that they can use the stories to, to make movies and TV shows and whatnot. So they're never really going to put like their best creators on there. And even when they do, they're not going to be on that that long. Like Jerry Duggan and Ron Gardy on Savage Sword of Coded for like two years would be amazing, but they just didn't care about the character enough. So I'm happy that it's leaving if the current rights holder wants to not even license it out and make new Conan comics. I say go for it. Find a good creative team. Get Ron Gardy on the series and find yourself a good writer, and I think you'll do all right. Marvel Comics hasn't officially confirmed losing the license rights to the character, but if true, it's likely to have an impact on future Conan the Barbarian starring titles. The King Conan miniseries from Jason Aaron and Mahmoud Aswar 
which was mired in controversy already, is set to release two issues later this year, while Conan is set to star in Savage Avengers from David Pepos and Carlos Magno. I'll be honest, I do feel bad for David Pepos. He's really waited for his break. He's paid his dues to in the comic book industry, and it felt like this Savage Avengers title was kind of going to be like his first really big break, something that maybe really established his name, that he's a good writer. I don't think he's a great writer, but he's got a lot of potential. So I do feel bad for David Pepos. The first comic book hasn't even come out, and people already know that the license has been lost. Likely, it's going to be you know, a miniseries. It's going to be very limited. And people already know that the character isn't going to be there. There's no staying power for the series, so it's probably going to lose a little bit of steam. But the King Conan series, for the most part, from Jason Aaron, is pretty good. Now, they did mention the controversy in the article. And I'll be honest, that's another reason that Marvel Comics should not have the Conan license. Conan is a very, very violent, bloody character. He also has an unquenchable thirst for women. He will bang like five to ten naked women at a time. They were never going to be able to do that within Marvel Comics. And that controversy, the non the made-up stuff where Jason Aaron was begging for his life and apologizing because he, he used a name that is barely known as an alias for a Pocahontas, even though the character design and the way the character is used bears no resemblance to Pocahontas. That's why Marvel and, and Jason Aaron should be writing Conan comics. They don't have the stones. They do not have the testicular fortitude to be able to handle a character as cool and as awesome as Conan, in my opinion. So not a big loss. There are only a few comic books from Marvel that are actually worth reading. King Conan is kind of one of them, but who gives a fuck? Marvel doesn't need any more licenses. They shouldn't do any license work anyway. Stick with your Marvel stuff. You're fucking that stuff up enough already. You don't need to be doing Alien and Predator. That needs to go back to Dark Horse. A Blaze needs to just do the Sumerian stuff as long as they get the creative teams from Europe. Not fucking Max Bemis, whatever. That was, that was stupid. But Conan deserves better than Marvel, and I'm not sorry that he's leaving there. We do have better news if you're a Ghost Rider fan. Specifically, if you like this current iteration from Ben Percy, who has lost steam on Wolverine and X-Force, but his Ghost Rider is still good. I actually like it quite a bit. So here's the information that we do have about the 50th anniversary of Ghost Rider. Marvel is celebrating Ghost Rider's 50th anniversary with a special issue. Ghost Rider Vengeance Forever Number 1 will be a one-shot written by Benjamin Percy with art from Juan Jose Rip, celebrating the anti-hero's legacy and creative history. Quote, for the 50th anniversary of Ghost Rider, I wanted to do something epic, Percy told comicbook.com. So I dreamed up an issue that channeled and celebrated the wild legacy of all the creators and stories who came before me. Well, I'm all for that. And I think we should be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Ghost Rider. He's a cool character. Doesn't get enough play in modern Marvel comics, in my opinion. He's kind of always, I don't know, second rate, third banana, something like that to all these other characters. I do like the choice of Juan Jose Rip as the artist he's not really perfect for a lot of superheroes but with his art style which is pretty rough in all the right ways for a character like ghost rider i think he's a really good fit there this ought to be a lot of fun i think they should be doing more for ghost rider's 50th anniversary to be honest but he's not spider-man so you're not going to get ghost rider 1000 but i don't know maybe we could bring some ghost rider creators back to to do a an oversized one shot or something like that i don't know Ben Percy and Corey Smith do have a very good ongoing Ghost Rider series. If you haven't checked it out and you like Ghost Rider, maybe you were trepidatious to dip your toes back in the Marvel waters. I can tell you, at least for the first few issues, it's actually really good. Ghost Rider Vengeance Forever is set to weave into Percy and Corey Smith's current run while telling new stories about the other Ghost Riders. Continuing to speak about crafting the one-shot, Percy said, I did so by interweaving a large story about Johnny Blaze in the present, with smaller stories that spot like Danny, The Midnight Suds, Ghost Rider 2099, so many and so much more, including never-before-seen iterations of The Spirit of Vengeance. Percy also promised that a new character will be introduced to the Ghost Rider mythos, a haunting character named Necro the Tattooist. Well, hot damn, this thing's a speculator piece. You better get this on your pull list. This thing could be a key comic book. We might see Necro the Tattooist in the fucking MCU soon. So now it is a collector's item, folks. Make sure you get that on your pull list. There is a problem right now with Ghost Rider. And it's a problem we have with a lot of the heroes of Marvel Comics. There are too many fucking Ghost Riders. Let's be honest. There's Johnny Blaze, Danny Ketch. We've also got Robbie Reyes, 
in the Avengers. We've also got the Ghost Rider that's riding the Woolly Mammoth in 1 million BC Avengers. And I believe there's also a Ghost Rider that's a samurai happening in another comic book. So in the Marvel 616, there are fucking five Ghost Riders. Could we do anything to make the character less unique and special? I will give you this. The idea in the sight of a Ghost Rider on top of a woolly mammoth on fire is pretty cool. It makes a damn good variant cover. But it also, once you actually introduce the character into the lore and start telling stories with him, it kind of takes the importance away from Johnny Blaze and Danny Ketch and, and Robbie Reyes. Robbie Reyes is actually a cool character. I know some people say, he's not Ghost Rider, he's Ghost Driver, he's got a goddamn car. I will give you that. But the character is relatively well fleshed out. In fact, he's one of the few saving graces of Jason Aaron's Avengers run. He's like the best character that he has in there. But why is he there? Why is he Ghost Rider if Johnny Blaze and Danny Ketch are still around? How about we kill some of these characters off if you want to elevate somebody like Robbie Ray Reyes? And you're never going to get Robbie Reyes up if Johnny Blaze is still there. So why don't we just get rid of him? How about we have one fucking Ghost Rider at a time? And if we're going to get rid of him, they go out in a blaze of fucking glory where you're like, man, that is how a hero dies. And then someone else ascends up to the label of Ghost Rider. Because right now it kind of feels cheap like a lot of things, not only at Marvel, but DC as well. So those are your Marvel items for the day. We should have a lot more news coming this week because it's solicitation week. So we should have some new information regarding upcoming titles and storylines and maybe things that are canceled. But it does appear Marvel Comics are losing the license to Conan in the very near future, as well as we are getting the 50th anniversary celebration of Ghost Rider. I mentioned earlier that Savage Sword of Conan from Jerry Duggan and Ron Garney is fantastic. Actually, Ron Garney, just as an artist, is fantastic. You probably like his Hulk. You like his Captain America. Right now, he's on Berserker doing great stuff. I actually got to sit down with Ron Garney not too long ago. He's a super nice guy, really open up about working with Keanu Reeves, what it was like doing Captain America, some of his stuff with Conan. Definitely check this out if you want to hear from Ron Garney about his art and what he's done in comic books. Great guy.